Hello everybody, it's me again and it's Mark 4 again and we're going to look at uh, the second parable uh, in our kind of mini-series in Mark 4 that we're doing this week uh, following on from uh, Dave's message on Sunday on from the parable of the sower. So on Tuesday we talked about the parable of the growing seed and today the parable of the mustard seed. So let me start by reading it to you. It's in Mark chapter 4. Uh, verses 30 to 32 again Jesus said what shall we say the kingdom of God is like or what parable shall we use to describe it it is like a mustard seed which is the smallest of all seeds on earth yet when planted it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants with such big branches that the birds can perch in its shade well if uh, Tuesday's um, parable about the growing seed was about the inevitability of the growth of the kingdom of God that it is unrelenting and unstoppable today's parable is about the magnitude of the growth of God that it is immeasurable and uncontainable uh, mustard seed I don't know if you've seen one um, I've got some in a little bowl in my office actually at church as a reminder um, and uh, they're kind of, I guess, if you they're they're round a bit like um, the silver cake decorations that you might get. They're not silver, obviously, but that sort of size, perhaps even smaller, probably even smaller than those, but really small, round, tiny seeds. But once planted, they grow into an enormous uh, mustard bush. Uh, they could grow mustard bushes up to something around three meters tall, but it wasn't the height that was the the greatest extent really it was the the breadth because they would just keep spreading uh, all over the place and they were renowned for being and still are being pretty uncontrollable plants uh, and in those days it wasn't they were never planted in a garden around other plants because they just got everywhere in and amongst everything else that's growing around them you, you couldn't sort of contain them or control a, a mustard bush it just went where it wanted and got in all the places uh, wherever it could get. Uh, and this picture of sort of spreading all over the place without restriction is the picture Jesus wants to, to give of the kingdom. Uh, uh, Jesus, if you like, uh, on his um, arrival on earth, um, planted the kingdom. His first words in Mark 1 uh, verse 15, he says this, The time has come, the kingdom of God has come near repent and believe the good news this picture of the kingdom now having a right that it's not just a kingdom of of heaven or kingdom of the future it's a kingdom that's coming now that is planted on earth in the person of jesus and uh, uh and the the picture jesus gives here is of something tiny and insignificant and seemingly unimportant becoming immense and uncontainable and immeasurable uh, and I guess in worldwide terms, we see this work that Jesus is doing in and through the disciples as a tiny enterprise, really, affecting a few insignificant lives uh, in a particular area of the world, making next to no difference on a worldwide scale as far as anyone can see. Uh, even then into Acts, uh, at the start of Acts, we, we have a dozen uneducated men whose leader has just been crucified uh, it's hardly uh, a great beginning uh, to that part of the the, the growth of the kingdom uh, and Jesus wants to his followers to know here that the, this kingdom that he has planted that is beginning to grow around them will eventually uh, grow to such immense proportions on earth despite its really quite inauspicious beginnings that it is not going to be contained or controlled or stopped so that they can see that even in the small unimpressive beginnings that are happening around them which to them probably were very impressive but on a worldwide scale aren't achieving much actually are achieving far more and are far greater than they can possibly imagine and even for us today what the kingdom is doing and, and how it is growing and how it is extending and how it is uh, reaching in and out uh, of so many different places is far greater than we can imagine even today. 
And the ultimate extent of this growth of the kingdom is described in Revelation 5 verses 9 to 10. This was uh, read out as part of the worship on Sunday morning. Uh, and it's these words are from this new song that was sung to Jesus as he appears as the lamb in this, in this, in this picture in Revelation. They sing this, you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals because you were slain and with your blood, you purchased for God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God and they will reign on the earth. This is where this is ultimately going at and uh, uh, what God is ultimately doing, bringing together, purchasing people from every tribe, language, people, nation into a kingdom, becoming part of this kingdom that Jesus is describing here as beginning as a tiny seed and becoming this uncontainable bush. And there's a lovely little line uh, in here that Jesus says, with such big branches, he describes this, uh, the largest of all garden plants with such big branches, that the birds can perch in its shade. A beautiful uh, picture of what the kingdom is. That, that it's When we say it's uncontainable, it's not that it's aggressive and taking over everything. It is a place where people can find shelter, where they can find a place, where they can belong, where they can find shade. It reminds me of the words in Psalm 91, first two verses. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. This kingdom is a place of shelter for any and all because it's the kingdom of the Almighty God who is full of love and compassion for us. It's, a, it's such a beautiful picture of this thing growing beyond anybody's comprehension and yet being a welcoming and a special place for all where any can come and find God and find all that God offers. So really uh, interesting picture, one of my favourite parables uh, for a variety of reasons. And what, what does it have to say to us just as I finish? Well, there's a couple of verses in 2 Corinthians that sprang to mind as I was pondering on this. Uh, verse Chapter 5, verse 7, walk by faith, not by sight. Uh, is an important thing that we see here, that we base our decisions not on uh, what appears to be true, what appears to be happening, not not on the fact that some things might be seem insignificant and unimportant. Some of the things God calls us to do, some of the conversations we have seem insignificant, unimportant, but actually to base our decisions on, what, on how God leads us and what the Bible says uh, and to walk in faith that he is doing this incredible extensive growth of the kingdom around us that we might not see and might not understand but uh, we walk by faith in him that he will continue to do this and then chapter 4 of 2 Corinthians verse 18 so we fix our eyes not on what is seen but on what is unseen since what is seen is temporary but what is unseen is eternal our small day by day hour by hour obediences to god are achieving far more than we can possibly imagine and we need to fix our eyes on this eternal immense kingdom of god that is unstoppable that is uncontainable uh, rather than the, the world around us where we see uh, far uh, uh, behavior and ways of living and pain and struggle and battle that is that is not the picture of the kingdom of God that kingdom is continuing to grow and develop around us so I hope that's helpful uh, something to continue to ponder and to think about as we think about what what it means for us to be part of God's kingdom in Durham and in the surrounding villages and in our neighborhoods and amongst our family and friends uh, that God is growing this kingdom beyond our greatest imaginings and that's important for us to remember in these days. A great encouragement, I think, to us day by day. Thanks for listening. Again, uh, speak to you soon.